Hello, my friend and friend, and welcome back to the channel. Maybe you came here from my previous video where we looked at the basics of nesting, or maybe you're new to the channel, in that case, welcome. And today we're gonna to be looking at some tips and tricks and weird stuff you can do with nesting that can be useful, but we just wanna be a little bit careful with it. Uh, the, I, th I think it's fun use cases for it. Uh, if you've never seen nesting before, I would really encourage you to check out the other video to understand the basics of how it works, uh, just because we're gonna be playing around with the ampersand character in different ways here. Uh, and all of them sort of follow a similar pattern. So once you understand that pattern, uh, it, you'll see why it can be useful, even if it looks a little bit strange. And we'll also address the, the topic of code smell along with this as well, because sometimes uh, some people occasionally say things. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get there when we get there uh, about how I, I think these types of patterns are okay in the right situations. And that's always the key is in the right situations, right? So let's start off by looking at center text with a max width. So it can be really good practice to set a max size or inline size, which is a width. Uh, it's just the logical property. So left to right is our inline size uh, to make text more readable. This is a little bit narrow. I'm just doing it for demo purposes today to highlight, uh, but it can just make sure that your text isn't stretching too wide. Often we want to put that on our paragraphs. The problem is if ever we have something like this and then you use a text align center, it can cause problems. So let's come over to here and on my body, and I also wouldn't put this on your body, like general tip of typography, don't center everything. It makes text hard to read. Two lines, you're probably fine. Four is pushing it a little bit. Um, but again, you might be following what your designers are doing. Just red flag if your designers are telling you to center text uh, everywhere. But uh, yeah, well, that's beyond the scope of today's video. We just wanna look at when we do that, all of a sudden we can see that things aren't centered anymore. The text is centered, but it's not centered within the space it had. And if we put borders on, we can actually see why that's happening because we have the max width and the text is centered within the size of that max width that we have. Whereas over here, the headings are the full size. So it's actually centered within the correct space that we uh, originally set. So to fix this, I mean, we could come and, you know, we could say a text center P somewhere is going to be a margin inline and margin inline is the a logical property left and right. Uh, and we can center it. That's fine. But generally speaking, you wouldn't have these next to each other in your CSS file probably. Uh, and to me, this is kind of code smelly in the sense of like, I don't know, like I, I, if those are separate, do I really want to be selecting my P's in a very specific way? Uh, I, I do but I sort of want this style to be where I'm styling my paragraphs rather than where I'm styling my text center stuff. Uh, so we can use nesting as a bit of a trick to replicate that where I can come inside my paragraph and here I can say text center ampersand and do a margin in line of auto here. And we can see it's still working. Turn it off, they're left aligned, turn it back on, they go centered. and this is happening because we're putting the ampersand at the end. So this is exactly the same thing as writing a text center is P and doing our margin on this. And the is P is essentially the same thing as that, which is exactly what I'd written up here before. The reason I like this again is because I'm keeping all of these styles together. This doesn't really have anything to do with the text center styling. It has everything to do with the paragraph styling. So I sort of like having it all nested within there, but it does look a little weird because whenever the ampersand is coming after, people get a little confused about what's actually happening. So I probably would leave a comment here, especially if I had to do a, like a pull request that involved this and I didn't want someone questioning it. Uh, just a, a quick explainer, well, you know, a little short one-liner center, like put the paragraph in the middle when we're using text align center utility, I, I think is uh, completely fine and we're good to go. So that is our center text little trick that we can do right there. I'm gonna also take off our borders for the rest of these other ones. Next up, I wanna look at modifiers. Uh, and actually the styling of the parent might be the most useful one, though it's also the most dangerous one. <laughs> you can decide. This one's a, a take it or leave it, but I wanted to look at it anyway. It's following a very similar pattern where what we're going to say is, let's say we have our cards and we have a featured that can come on one of them, right? So let's go on that second card here, the modifiers one, and you have JavaScript pulling in all the content and it sees that there's a feature on there. So it adds the data featured uh, equals true 
as an attribute. And so here I'm styling it and I'm changing the border color. Now maybe on the modified one, I also want to change my H2 styling. Now I could come in here and style the H2 here, and this is where it's we're already encapsulating everything. Do you want to take this extra step? Mm, we'll see. Uh, but you can follow that same pattern that we just saw, where I can come in here and say that if we have a data featured is equal to true, and our H2 is nested inside of there, we can change the color of it. Color is now going to be var color accent 500. It might be too dark. Oh, I put the H2. <laughs> I put the H2, I want, I've said follow the same pattern, follow the same pattern, you put the ampersand, not the H2 selector again. Uh, let's make this the 300 again, just to make it a bit lighter. So we're changing everything. Uh, again, you could have the H2 here. I sort of like this idea again though, where I'm saying, this is all my H2 styles of my card, this is my normal style, and if it's a featured card, I'm then changing the color of it this way. And of course these can be with classes too, I'm just using the H2 selector. Um, but yeah, another, again, it, it's a nice way to enable us to keep related styles all together. Now onto this last one. <laughs> this last one is where things can get a little bit interesting. So you can see I have this gradient border uh, here. And when I say interesting, I mean super useful in the right situations, as long as you're being very careful with how you're using it. Uh, where it's about forcing a style on a parent, uh, which is, potentially a cause for problems. So I would only use this in situations that are very, very specific, such as the one we're gonna look at right here. So I wanna style the parent in a specific way. So let's say I have this gradient border class. So let's come and we're gonna add that on this last card, gradient border. So now our featured one doesn't look as fancy because we have this other one coming in uh, and, and looking fancier. And we can see that gradient border coming in. Okay. So, and we have, we have like a double border, I think, uh, because, <laughs> because of the way this is working. I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. Uh, we could, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like this, it's fine. We can see that coming in. And I'm gonna make this a lot bigger, just so it makes it more obvious what's gonna happen here. Uh, where we can see that border that's, or the gradient that's coming in on there. Uh, and if you wanna know how I'm doing this, I've covered this in another video, I'll put a link in the description to that. Uh, but we can see that gradient is coming in, and it looks fine. The problem is if we come and all of these are in something called cards, you might use this all over the place, right? The gradient border could be used in many different places. And if one of those places happens to have a background color on it, cards, background of, uh, let's just say, I'll set var color neutral 700, which should be lighter. Uh, I lose the gradient border. And the reason I'm losing it is because I've created this with a pseudo element. I needed the pseudo element to be behind everything. And to make it behind everything, I used a Z index of negative one to push it back. The problem is now it's going back behind everything, including the background on my cards. Being a utility class that I would want to plug and play and put in different places, I wouldn't want to have to then go, okay, I'm using it here on this parent. I need to create a new stacking context every single time. So we can use nesting to force a new stacking context to be created. So where I have my gradient border, what we could do is come in and say has ampersand. I can't find the ampersand. There's the ampersand. Okay. So has ampersand. I'm going to write isolation, isolate, and it comes back. Fancy, right? Uh, so what's happening here? I am saying that any element that has a gradient border in it, and this could be a little bit over the top. Maybe we would do has as a direct child. That would probably be a little bit safer. So if it has the gradient border as a as its child, I always say direct child, it's child. And if it has it as a child, it gets isolation isolate. If you don't know what isolation isolate is, it's creating a new stacking context. That's the only thing it does. Uh, you could also do this with a position of relative and a Z index of one. The problem with this, uh, or any Z index would work, the problem with this is you're also creating a new containing block, and if you're using positioning as well, then it could actually cause some problems depending, like it might not happen, but there is that potential side effect. Whereas if I'm just doing an isolation isolate, all I'm doing is creating a new stacking context, which means that now we have the gradient border happening here, so it's going to the parent, and it's saying this parent is creating a new stacking context, which means the negative one can't go outside of this element. 
Like that negative one is scoped to here and it can't go further back than that. So even if it was something else create, like maybe my extra wide for some reason is creating the background color instead of on the cards, that's also completely fine because we're still scoped within like this stacking context of that element and we're not breaking out of it. So it's in, for me, this is the one time uh, I've, I've come up with using it this way. And just if you're confused by what that is, let's write it out. We're saying that, so it's is, <laughs> any element that has that, so it'd be is gradient border, uh, and we're styling that. So essentially it would be like this, which would be the same as doing this. So it's any element where the child is our gradient border is going to get the new stacking context right there and prevent any issues from happening. Now I'm really curious what you think about all of these. Cause again, sometimes people see these, they're really weird looking. You could do this without the, the, the nesting here. Uh, again, a comment would probably go a long way to explaining this because this one looks very bizarre, but it also works really, really well. So I'm curious uh, on your thoughts on all of these. If you have any other cool use cases of has, please do leave a comment down below. And if you do want to check out the video on the gradient border that I put here, including how you can animate it, uh, there is that video that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome Johnny, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.